Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Miranda Hunley and I do true crime. I have not had a voice for a full week. As of today, this is Friday the 11th, I have not had a voice for a full week. So another reason why my videos just didn't exist last week. But <clears throat> today we are on Texas and this is a, another requested case. I think most of my cases are requested, but this is about Kathy Page. And somebody asked me if I had seen the movie Three Billboards, and I said no. They told me to look it up. It led me to this case. I talked to them about it. They were like, yes, talk about that on your channel. So here I am. So the whole Three Billboards thing is started by James Fulton who is trying to find justice for his daughter. And his daughter's name is Kathy Page. Kathy got married at a very young age. She met this guy, he was married, he was older. Her family approved of him, his name was Steven, but he was married and he divorces his wife. He gets with Kathy and they have two daughters together. So Steve and Kathy had two daughters, Erin and Monica. They were married for 13 years when Kathy decided she wanted to separate. And Steve really didn't want to do that. He really wanted to hold on to the relationship with Kathy, but he agreed to separate. He got an apartment of his own, but they would still do family activities together. So Steve would come over and help the girls get ready for bed, tuck them into bed, and then he'd go back to his apartment. He was a really good dad. He was not so much great at being a spouse and Kathy was really enjoying getting her independence and she actually started seeing somebody. So May 14th, 1991, which I'm going to post this on the anniversary of it just for the hell of it. Kathy calls her ex-husband Steve to come hang out with the girls at her house while she went out with her girlfriends that night. And she's getting ready, she's getting out of the shower and Steve says, we don't know if this is true or not, but Steve says that he starts complimenting her as she's getting out of the shower and they make love. Steve also said that she shaved her legs in the living room, which is really weird. I mean, if you shave, maybe she, that's the only room that had a TV and she just didn't want to be bored shaving her legs. So she shaved her legs in the living room. I've never done that. Honestly, me shaving my legs is a very rare case, but maybe she did, maybe she didn't. And then she gets ready and then she heads out the door. However, Kathy did not go meet her girlfriends. She went and met her boyfriend at a motel. And she wants an alibi, so she calls one of her girlfriends. She asks this girlfriend, hey, if Steve calls you to see where I'm at, just don't pick up the phone or say I'm with you. And her girlfriend's like, all right, I got you. And 2.30 a.m., she leaves the motel after hanging out with her boyfriend, and she heads home. And this is where we really don't know exactly what happened. Steve says Kathy never came home, but Kathy was found at 4.30 in the morning, only 100 yards from her house and her vehicle, and her vehicle was in a ditch. Kathy, however, was cleaned up. She didn't have any makeup or anything like that on. In the front seat of the car where she had a drink that was not spilled, and her legs weren't even extended out to the gas pedal or the brake. Like, they were just back. And Kathy was in a ditch, so her car was like this. And Kathy herself was leaned back in her chair. So she, there was no force, like she ran into the ditch and she fell forward. Seems like somebody had driven her car gently into the ditch, took her out of the passenger seat and put her into the driver's seat and tried to stage a car accident. Now, somebody around two or three in the morning, saw Steve walking back to Kathy's house from the direction where the car accident was staged. But this person didn't come forward for years because he was somewhere he was not supposed to be. 
So he's like, well, I can't tell the police that. They're going to ask me why I was out running around at 2 and 3 in the morning. When the police get there, they're taking pictures of the crime scene. You know, that's pretty normal, right? Only they didn't have film in the camera. So, like, you, I remember cameras back then. And you know when there's no film in there. So why did they do that? They go to Steve and they tell Steve that Kathy is dead. And he throws himself on the couch and he's crying. And the police like shine a light on his eyes and there are no tears. And they're like, okay, we need to like search the house. And instantly he's not crying anymore. He's like, where's your warrant? And the police were like, this is a crime scene. You know, this could be the last place Kathy was saw alive. And he's like, well, you can't search without a warrant. I don't want you to find anything that incriminates me. You don't say, Steve. You know, there might be something in here that incriminates you. So for whatever reason, because my understanding of the law is that a, like, if there's some type of investigation, like a staged car accident with a dead woman, you are allowed to you know, preserve the potential crime scene and wait for the judge to give a warrant, but still nobody is allowed in or out of the house until, you know, it's searched. I don't know like what the police were thinking, but they were like, all right, Steve, see you later, alligator. Have a good day. So when the police come back to search the house, because now they have a search warrant, Steve had already hired people to come deep clean it and deep clean the carpets. And on the other side, Kathy is getting her autopsy and she was beaten and strangled by somebody who is left hand dominant. And guess what? Steve is ambidextrous. This is where I get really confused, but... Kathy was sexually assaulted by somebody who had a vasectomy because the sperm was not viable. Okay, Steve had a vasectomy, so it's very well that could have been him. And he also said that they had consensual sex before she went out that night, which they very well could have. Um, according to Kathy's loved ones, they think that's pretty unlikely. But also... You know, it's also nobody's business if she's sleeping with her ex and, like, this new guy that she, like, I don't know if they were, like, officially in a relationship. Like, it's just nobody's business. So, I don't really, like, trust people and they're like, oh, no, she definitely didn't do that because you don't know, you know? You don't know what the moment was. But Kathy's boyfriend said that they had sex at the motel. So, like, wouldn't his DNA be there, too? I didn't see any reports about that. 1993 when the it's two years past and the case is still kind of just floating around in the air James Fulton starts putting up billboards asking you know the local police station why did you watch this case and billboard saying this could happen to you James even accuses the police station of taking a bribe by Stephen's parents so Kathy's parents fought for custody of Kathy's two daughters but Kathy's two daughters didn't want to go to their grandparents because their grandparents were always talking bad about their dad. And Kathy kids were so young when their mom passed away that they really clung on to their dad because that's the only parent they had. And they didn't want to hear people talking bad about their dad. Their dad was never convicted of a crime, although he was found financially responsible for Kathy's death and was ordered to pay Kathy's parents fifty thousand dollars and then steve went on to like deface kathy's grave there was flowers all around it and it was caught on video and i can't find this video but it was found on video him throwing the flowers off and just kicking dirt on the grave and all this and that and that's just so awful it would definitely be infuriating for kathy's parents but i also see where her kids are coming where they're like i don't want to live in such a negative environment Kathy's kids also hated the billboards because it was causing a lot of bullying. 
as they were growing up and they didn't find it as fighting for justice for Kathy but more placing blame on their dad in the police station. Monica Nicole Page, Kathy's youngest daughter, passed away at the age of 28 of a drug overdose. She had taken 25 Vicodin and it just really shows how much pain everybody was causing for these two girls who had lost their mother. But that is all I have for you guys. Thank you for sticking by. I know my voice is kind of funky today, but I just really wanted to get this video recorded. So I have something to deliver for you guys. I love each and every one of you. There's so much love at the bottom of my heart for you. I'm sending you so much love, so much positivity. Thank you. Have a great day. Please like and subscribe.